What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today what we got is a new series on the channel called Questions with Treeb. Yes ladies and gentlemen I asked you in a community post to ask me your Jacksonville Jaguar related questions and I will answer it on the video. I also asked on Facebook and Twitter and we got a couple of questions from each platform and I'm very excited to answer those questions. Now but before we get into this video why don't you go ahead and drop, drop a like down below. I cannot speak today. It's already one of those days. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. Without further ado ladies and gentlemen this is Questions with Treeb episode 1. I would like to give a shout out to every single person that um asked a question of me and i will be um doing this regularly so if you have any new questions for me regarding the jacksonville jaguars you can leave it in the comment section down below and chances are i will be making a community post so you know if i'm going to be doing a questions with Treeb. so i will give you a one or two day notice to go ahead and get your questions in to make sure that your question can be featured on the video, also ladies and gentlemen, we are now uploading every single video that we have in an audio format to SoundCloud. So if you have a SoundCloud app and you want to just listen to your boy talk, the link to this episode will be in the description. Make sure you go subscribe on SoundCloud so you can get the podcast version of every single video. Now let's hop into the video and get into the questions. This first question is from my guy Ben the Scientist. Ben the Scientist actually dropped a couple of questions, so this won't be the last time you hear his name in the video. So he basically asks, Treeb, if the Jags traded Jalen, would they get more value out of him now or next year? Now, of course, as a Jags fan, and I'm sure all of you as well, we really don't want to trade Jalen Ramsey. You know, that definitely is something that we don't want to be in the books. But if it was a scenario where it had to happen, where the Jags, you know, they knew they weren't going to be able to sign Jalen Ramsey and they need to get him, they need to ship him, they need to trade him, they need to get something of value for him. And when will they have the biggest value? Now, I think if you trade him now, I think you're definitely going to be getting a bigger value than you would in 2020. The guy's on his fifth-year option right now. Now, in 2020, when he's getting paid that much money and in a chance that he might hold out, you know, you might end up having to pay him the second that you trade for him. And I think as of right now, he'll play out the money that he's getting paid now, and then you'll have to sign him the next year. So I think this year is the year that you really need to go out and trade Jalen Ramsey if you're going to do it. I would definitely, definitely be against against trading Jalen Ramsey in every sense of the way but if we we're trying to go for more value I'd say we need to get him you know traded this year but again this is not going to happen hopefully in my opinion but if it does happen then I think 2019 is the year to do it and 2019 is the year where you're going to get the most return on a Jalen Ramsey trade however it's not like in 2020 are you not gonna I think that either way Jalen's a talented player, so I think that we're going to be able to get a decent amount of whatever we need in order to get uh, Jalen Ramsey off the team. I think that either way, 2019, 2020, the Jags will get incredible value out of, you know, whatever they trade for Jalen Ramsey, if that is the case, you know, guaranteed first rounder at least, and maybe a position of need as well. Maybe somebody like a big name position of need that the Jaguars need filled, you know, maybe like a big name wide receiver in a first round draft pick, and then we trade Jalen Ramsey and something else. But I think that if the Jags were trying to get the most value out of Jalen Ramsey, then they would try and ship him in 2019. Thank you for that question, Ben the Scientist. Now, who do I need? What question should I do next? I'm going to do Ben the Scientist's next question after this one. I'm going to say, how do the Jaguars match up with every other team in the division? I think the Jags match up insanely well with everybody in the division. I'm not too worried about the Tennessee Titans on paper. I'm not too worried about Houston on paper. The only team that I'm really worried about inside the AFC South is the Indianapolis Colts. And I think I speak for a lot of Jags fans in that sense. I think that the Colts are the only team in the AFC South besides us that I can see making a playoff push. And, you know, we beat the Colts last year 6-0 to with Cody Kessler at the quarterback position. So the Jags are definitely going to be able to beat Andrew Luck and the Colts, or at least, you know, give them a test um, to see what they are really all about because they do have a lot of young talent that, of guys that are going to be coming around, like Darius Leonard and Quentin Nelson. He's great up front. Robert Kelly to the center. You know, they're all really good up front. But I'd say that the Jags match up pretty well inside the division. I'm not buying Houston's hype as much as people... 
other people are. You know, their defense is going to match up well against our offense if our offensive line doesn't stay healthy and doesn't do what it needs to do. But Cam Robinson just just did come off of the uh, physically unable to perform list, so that's a good that's good news for the Jaguars. But um, you know, if our offensive line's not up to par, then our offensive line's going to struggle against you know all three of these guys' defensive lines heading into 2019. But if it's a whole healthy offensive line, if we're talking from a perspective of all healthy teams throughout the season, I think the Jags match up well with every single team inside of the AFC South. Um, I'm not buying Marcus Mariota this year. I think he's going to have one of his worst years um, of his entire career. I think he's going to go downhill, and I think that the Titans and Titans fans alike are going to kind of wake up and smell the coffee that, you know, this guy's not your franchise quarterback. This guy's not the guy you thought he was. He's not the quarterback that you want him to be. He's not the guy that's going to take you to the next level. I think Mariota really struggles this year. And it's going to be very upsetting because this is a really good, talented defense that they have in Tennessee. And it's going to be a big shame to see it go to waste with Marcus Mariota at quarterback. But that's just how it's going to be because Mariota, there's no way he doesn't have a down year this year for the Titans. My next question is from my guy from another Jags podcast, Jason. He's been on the channel a couple of times, of course, co-host of one of the best, if not the best, Jaguar podcast on the net. And he asks me, J1 Taylor or Josh Allen, who has the bigger impact in 2019? I think that Josh Allen strives from the position that he's in, that I think that he will be able to have the bigger impact between him and Jaywan Taylor. And even if Jaywan Taylor does like ungodly and he does really, really well and is going to be taking that next step to be like a guy that we could rely on for the long term to be a franchise right tackle, you know, not a lot of people are going to be talking about it because that's just how offensive linemen are. You know, so it's always going to feel like Josh Allen's going to be having the bigger impact. And I think he benefits, again, from the situation he's in. You know, Yannick Ngakwe, Clayce Campbell, those are going to be your starters. He's going to be a real Dante Fowler-esque player. He's going to come in in the rotation and just dominate when he has his time. You know, when his number's called, he's going to be doing great. I think Josh Allen has a chance to get double digits off the bench this year. I think this Jaguar defensive line as a whole is a group that you don't want to mess with, from the starting four to guys coming off the bench. And I I'm, dare I say it, even Taven Bryan. I think Taven Bryan um, might have a comeback or, you know, come back, come around season this year. Uh, he didn't look the part in the preseason game, and, you know, that's what some people say. I thought he did all right. I think he did pretty good against the run. But, you know, I think Taven Bryan's a guy that is going to need to step up, and, you know, he's going to be a part of, like, the rotational guys. Uh, so he's going to be in when Josh Allen's in. So you know they're going to put a lot of focus on Josh Allen when he's out there. So, you know, that frees up Taven Bryan, and Taven Bryan might be able to make a lot of plays. So I think Josh Allen's going to be more successful than Jaywan Taylor this year. I just think that based off of the situation he's in, he's not going to be an every-down player. And, you know, his stats are overall are going to reflect that and show that he had a really good 2019 season. And I would be going with Josh Allen to outperform Jaywan Taylor. Next up is a question from my guy, Jamin, and he asks, if the Jaguars go below 500, is Doug Marone on the hot seat? Do you think the Jags will fire him? It depends on how below 500 the Jaguars go. I think if we go 6-10 and 10 and 7-9, and nine, I think Doug Marone sticks around one more year and we give him that other chance. If we go 4-12, and 5-11, and 11, unfortunately, I think that will be the end of Doug Marone's tenure here. Uh, it's going to be very interesting because it looks like the locker room has completely lost the coaching staff and completely lost the front office. And trust me, we'll get into that in a little bit because the last question has to deal with something like that. So it seems like Doug might be an odd man out and it might be, you know, a situation where Doug can't control his players. You know, he can't get a hold of these guys so maybe it's best if he does leave and maybe it's best that the Jaguars do find somebody that could control all of these guys you know from the outside looking in Doug Marone doesn't seem like a bad coach he seems like he has a really good head on his shoulders and he knows what he's doing out there he knows how to coach a coach a football game and he's proved it 2017 his first year at the helm took us to the playoffs and last year I mean he was just dealt a bad hand of cards and this year, I think if he's dealt an average hand of cards or a good uh, good hand of cards, I think he's going to make 
could do with it. I think he just needs positive things to go off of in order to be successful. Because though the Jaguars, you know, lost some games last in 2017 against like the Jets and against like the Cardinals, but they also, you know, had big wins like against the Seahawks. You know, you need that momentum builder, and they also didn't have a lot of injuries. You know, in 2018, that could have been what like the Patriots game was. You know, we beat the Patriots. You know, we could keep on building off of that momentum, but there was just so many injuries to the point where Doug Marone really didn't have anything positive to build off of in that 2018 season. So as long as the Jaguars do stuff that, you know, constantly makes you feel optimistic and, you know, you have things that you can build on, I think Doug Marone's going to have a good season as the Jaguars head coach next year. So I think if the Jaguars win less than six games, I think Doug Marone will get fired. If he wins more than six, he should definitely be sticking around. And, you know, especially if he wins like six, then, you know, next year, even during the season, this guy could be cut, could be let go, and it could be, again, a new era in Jacksonville. Time for a new head coach. Now, my final, final question comes from Patrick. Patrick Jackson. I called him Peter Jackson in the last video, and he got real upset. So, Patrick Jackson, my guy, he's been on the channel once or twice before as well. He asks me, what do you think about the players in the chair situation? Now, if you don't know what this, what's going on with this, you obviously don't follow any Jaguar player on social media, and you're obviously not a part of the Jaguars like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook community because you would have seen this. Now, it was on CJ Revis' Instagram story of AJ Boye, Miles Jack was in there, CJ obviously, and what they were, and Jay Wan, I mean, not Jay Wan Taylor, Cam Robinson, you know, they were all in the mix. They were lifting up the chair and, you know, they're throwing it down, stomping on it, and, you know, people threw a big old hissy fit over it. And there is reason to be upset about this, and there is reason to think that this is a bad look for the team because it really is. That's it's a bad look for the team overall. There's no denying that. And <clears throat> I think that that's all it is really is a bad look. I think that people are reading too into this. You know, they're stomping on the Jaguar logo. I don't think that they were thinking about that. I think they were just being rowdy in the locker room, fucking around, having a good time. You know, I like to get the players the benefit of the doubt. But, you know, I've been doing that recently and lately has not been, you know, what it's turned out to be. It's always been worst case scenario but in my opinion i'm looking at it and i'm thinking these are guys that are in training camp they're probably just trying to have some fun do some wild shit so they're taking this chair and they're beating the shit out of it you know that's just the way she goes i guess but you know it is a bad look for a team to have you know a guy post that on his instagram story but i'm trying my best not to read into it too much i'm trying my best not to read into a lot of off-season storylines that a lot of people are seeming to believe in. Like, I'm trying not to believe that. I'm trying not to believe that the Jaguars won't sign Yannick and Gawkway. And I'm refusing to believe that the Jaguars are going to trade Jalen Ramsey. So, you know, I'm just trying to... It's all positive vibes over here. I'm trying to make sure that I myself am happy with what the Jaguars are doing and in the direction that the Jaguars are going in. So, I'm hoping that this was all clowning, you know, just a bunch of fun... But at the end of the day, it could have been something more, could have been something less. We don't know. But that's my overall thought about the chair situation. And those were all the, t all the questions we have today. So it's time to wrap up the video, ladies and gentlemen. And that was episode number one of Questions with Tree. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outwork me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.